Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. In this video, we're going to get baked in Lightburn. We're going to bake a birthday cake. We're going to use Boolean tools, the Deform tool, uh, Array tool, Offset tool. We're going to work with a lot of different tools. And I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible. And hopefully you'll take something away from this video. So hang around. We're going to have some fun. This video is going to have a lot of really good information in it, so be sure you're paying attention. I wouldn't be jumping around because if you do, you're going to miss out on some key points and priorities because light burn priorities are everything. If you don't follow priorities, then the, the technique ain't going to work. So let's jump into light burn without wasting any time. We're going to bake a cake today and this is a birthday cake that I'd use on my birthday cards that I use from... Uh, money holding uh, currency so I want to draw this as small as possible because I want the detail to be there whenever you shrink it down uh, so instead of having to shrink it down we're going to design it small that way when we blow it up all of the details still be there we won't lose anything by shrinking a larger image so I'm going to draw my first tier of the cake in fact, I'm not even going to worry about the dimensions uh, draw out. I'm just going to draw out a rectangle and I'm going to set my dimensions. With my aspect ratio unlocked, I'm going to say, let's try 90 millimeters by 30 millimeters. What does that give us? I'm going to snap my to a grid here. Uh, there's 10, 20, oh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. All right. So I got five millimeter grid all right um all right I, I i like that uh, we're going to start with this first base layer here now i'm going to draw a second rectangle and i'm going to come right up here to the corner of this and draw out half of that And now we can see, because I'm snapped into grid, right there it is 90 by 15. Now I'm going to draw some circles. First, I'm going to put a circle. Let's see if this is 90. Let's do uh, a circle that's 2 millimeters. Lock the aspect ratio, tell it 2, me two millimeters. Now I'm going to come in here close. I'm going to grab my crosshairs on the side of my circle. If you grab, you know, there's, you're grabbing the center of the circle. I don't want to grab the center, but I do want to grab the center of the perimeter. And if you can do that by looking for the crosshairs right there, and I'm going to bring that down and place it right there. And that should be centered up. And in fact, that little square you can see is bisected by the other line on the rectangle so that's centered up so that's two millimeters now let's draw out uh, an eight millimeter circle hold my shift key aspect ratio locked we'll tell it eight millimeters same thing again we're going to come in here and grab the center of that circle right there when we get to crosshairs drag it down and put it there now with that, I will grab both of those and I'm going to come to my array tool. I'm going to lower it so I can see my cake grid. And I'm going to create an array of these out at least to the end or past the cake. So that takes me, that takes me right to the end. I'm going to come past it, say OK. And now, actually, I, because of the way it worked out, uh, these are not practiced or rehearsed, guys. We're going to delete this one after all. 
going to grab all those, group them, tell it to go to center. Like that. That looks good. All right. Now I'm, I should just, there we go, ungroup those. Now I'm going to grab all of the big circles by holding my, or dragging from right to left. All I have to do is intersect those circles and it will select those. And I, it's the only thing I touched with those circles. Group those. Now I'm going to use my Boolean tool over here, which is the Boolean uh, A subtract B. So by selecting the small rectangle first, that's A, hold my shift button, select the group of larger circles, that's B. So that's A subtract B right here. Now I'm going to grab my little circles, dragging again from right to left, just touching those small circles only. Group those. Now with those grouped, I'm going to hold my shift key and grab that again. And now I'm going to weld using this Boolean tool here, the Boolean union, <clears throat> union A and B. And now I have my first tier with some dripping icing. All right, I'm going to come here. I'm going to select my radius tool and I want to give it a, a two and a half millimeter radius here. And I'll go ahead and select that icing and do it again. Come over to this corner, give it a radius and select the next one and give it another radius. There we go. Now I can select it all, control D, use my arrows, run it up, select just the cake, tell it I want only 70% of that. Ah, I didn't mean to do it that way. Undo. Get in there where you can type. There we go. 70%, not 71, 70%. Select our icing. We were icing over. That looks good. Select my cake. I'm going to duplicate this cake by saying Control D. Now holding my shift button, grab the icing, and I'm going to do an intersection right here. Boolean intersection A and B. And there we go. Now that icing fits this tier and it's not a direct mirror image of this lower icing. So I'm going to select both of them, use my docking tools right up here. And using this docking tool, you see the uh, squiggly arrows on top shows that's a motion down. So we're going to dock that down. Ah, I should have grouped those. Undo, group, and dock down. Now ungroup. Okay. I'm going to bring this down lower on my work table by selecting it all and just dragging her down. Now I need to draw some candles for my cake. And we're going to come over to our rectangle tool. We're going to grab or just draw out a rectangle. And this is at scale. This is exactly the size that I want to uh, put out on my birthday card. So I can look at this and say, okay, I want to use how big of a candle. So that right there would be five millimeters, but that's awfully darn thick for a candle. So let's come up here and um, tell it two and a half millimeters, see what that looks like. That's better. Let's, let's just look at two millimeters. I like that and let's do 20 millimeters high okay and that's still a little tall but that's okay because we're going to be lowering this into the cake in a minute because we're going to weld these together uh, so let's let's start there <clears throat> 2 by 20 now I need a flame for my candle now here I'm going to cheat instead of drawing out a circle and creating an ellipse and a flame and all that I know that in my font, my font selection, my font library, I have a font called candles. So if I come up here to my fonts and start typing candles, it'll 
go right to that. Now I can just come over here and start typing and I'm gonna use a lowercase i. That's a capital I. I need a lowercase i. There we go. And looky there, there's a flame. Well, this is a font, so it's all grouped together and it's you can't select just that flame. But what you do, come to edit, or no tools, rather, edit tools, edit. Come edit, convert to path. Now that you've converted that to a path, you can select that lower body and delete it. Select your flame, rotate it. Come over here to your candle, holding your shift key, select your candle, tell it to align to the center. Now what we're gonna do is just dock this one straight down. It does not need to be touching, but it's touching right now, so now I'll just use my arrow keys to bump it up. And there we have our first candle. Now, I am going to select the entire thing. I'm gonna hit Control D twice. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and group it. Group it and Control D, one, two. Now I'll take one of those and move it over to about the spacing that I want between the two candles. That's the two outermost candles. Now it's not centered in my cake, but that's the spacing that I want there. Now I will select all three candles. You can't see all three because these are still stacked, but selecting all three candles come up here to this option right here is distribute selected objects horizontally with even space between them. So by selecting all three, they're grouped. I can just do this. Now with them still selected, I'm gonna hit group. I'm gonna group that selection. Now I'm gonna hold my shift key and select that cake and tell it to align center and that's done. Now I need to uh, the cake, uh, that cake's a little tall, the cake, the candles are a little tall, but that's okay. We're going to lower those into the cake and weld them, and that's what we're going to do now. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because this is looking pretty good. That's a pretty decent looking cake. I'm going to hit Control D, and I'm going to duplicate that entire thing, and I'm going to bring it over here to the side. Because I want to show you a couple things. First, Let's look at grab, selecting both icings by holding our shift key and selecting each of them. We're gonna put that on a, a fill layer and then I'm gonna turn that off. By coming over to my cuts and layers where it says show, I'm just gonna uncheck that so now I, I don't even see it. So now I should be able to select them both and use this Boolean tool, Boolean Union, there we go. And here's where I said it didn't really matter about my candle height because I'm getting ready to lower those into the cake I'm going to select all three candles. Actually, you know what? Those are all still grouped. Yep, so let's ungroup it all. Select just the candles by dragging from left to right. All I have to do is fully encompass those. But since I did not encompass the flames, even though I touched them, you see here it's touching the flames. It didn't select them because you drag left to right, doesn't touch them, doesn't select them. You drag from right to left and see it's the same thing. Uh, but here I'm only going to touch the candles and the flames and it does grab everything. Had I gone down, well, right to left and I touched all, everything, everything's selected. Here, left to right, touching everything, the only thing that's selected are the candles because they're the only things that were fully encompassed. All right, now with that selected, I will come in here and use my control button to bring those down to where they are overlapping ever so slightly. Now I can drag right to left and, oh, you know what? You gotta group those first. So left to right, grabbing the candles only, group them. Now left or right to left, weld them. Now all of those are all one piece, the cake, the candles, so I can select that, say offset it outward, and we'll give it uh, a half a millimeter. Say okay, and let's, yeah, that'll work. Now put that in a fill mode, and let's put the candles 
on the blue layer, turn the blue layer back on. So now you can set up that ready for engraving. That looks pretty decent, but I'm going to show you how to make this look first class and add some dimension to this cake. Right now, it's a very flat piece of artwork. And with using just a few steps and a couple more tools in Lightburn, uh, the new one being uh, the Deform tool, we're going to give the illusion of this being a three-dimensional cake and having some curvature to it instead of it being a flat piece of artwork. All right. And the reason I've got these on two layers, if you go to engrave this, let's look, let's select the whole thing. And actually, you know what? Yeah, let's select the whole thing, put it all on black. We're at the roulette table, put it all on black. Now you look at the preview and you look at your traversal moves in a standard feel. All of this pink is wasted energy and time because it's it, the only engraving that's happening right here is just this edge of the cake, but the laser's moving this across this entire thing. And it's taken 22 minutes to do that right there. But now, if I come back and we put the icing and the flames on the blue layer. Did I not? Oh, I didn't select all the flames. Let's get all the flames. There we go. Now, if we look at just this by itself, and if we come over here, and I'm going to put the speeds and powers at the same thing. That was at 50 and 55. 50 and 55, say okay. So now this still should say 22 minutes because all we did was put it on different layers. Actually, it's gonna be a little bit longer because it's two different layers and now it's having to come back and do repeating itself. But let me show you how we're gonna make this save a ton of time from 22 minutes. We're gonna use the engrave. We'll come to this layer here this is where you've got all of the really wasted traversal moves. We're going to put this on a offset fill and we're going to increase our lines per inch. Uh, if a lot of your, most of your lasers advertise they'll do a 0 0.08, which is 317.5 lines per inch. But with offset fill, this can sometimes create some irregularities in your engraving, but I found that if you increase your lines per inch, you will eliminate a lot of that. And so if we just take that to 350 lines per inch, say okay, and offset fill. Let's look at this fill. Fill all shapes at once, fill groups together. Fill all shapes at once is fine, say okay. And now let's look at that. We were at 22 minutes, and then the second time we looked, it was 33 minutes. But now we are at 13 minutes. So we cut that nearly in half. And what that's going to do, and we still got the traversal moves on, and that we can actually even make that a little better. Not much. Feel shapes individually. All right, so we were at 13 minutes. Let's do that. And now look at this in preview, 13 minutes even. And see there's no traversal moves between the flames. It's filling the flame, filling the flame, filling the flame. And on the offset fill of the cake, you, what it's doing is it starts, and we'll put this in just play so you can see it. Let's fill the screen up and play. And it's at half speed. Let's speed her up a little bit. So there you can see it's just making a perimeter run around that cake. And with the increased lines per inch, it should help eliminate any anomalies using offset fill. But there, now you begin your traversal moves doing your icing. So we went from 22 minutes to 13 minutes by making that little save. But now, I tra uh, I got off topic there. Let, let's, let's look at making this cake a lot more unique. 
So let's put uh, all that's in. The, that's fine. Let's put it all back in line mode on black layer. This is the original design, and I'm going to make a few changes here. Uh, let's see here. First, let's go ahead and put the icing and the flames on the blue layer. That's in a fill mode. All the candles were grouped, so let's ungroup that. Select just the candles and put that back on the black layer. There we go. All right, now let's select our lower icing only. We're going to come up here to Tools and Deform Selection. Now, Deform Selection gives you 16 points to twist and move and bend around. You can move these uh, in pairs if you use your Shift and Control buttons. Shift will grab the two horizontal opposites. So this is the outermost on the left. This is the outermost on the right. And if we hold our Shift button and we come to this singular point right here and start moving it, it's now going to move both of those extreme opposites. Now if we hold our control button instead of our shift button holding control and that same point now it's going to move the vertical opposites same thing if we come up here to this one here holding shift it's going to grab that one out there holding shift control It's going to do its vertical opposites. Okay, so now let's go back here, undo all that, go back in, and hit our tool, or edit, and or not our tools, hit our tools and our deform selection, get our six points. And what I'm going to do now is attempt to create the illusion of this dripping uh, around a around a round cake. So by holding my shift button. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab the holding shift. You know, the other end is also moving. I don't need to see it because I know what it's doing because it's doing the same thing this one is. And I'm going to drag these two up. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hold, I'm still holding my shift button. I'm grabbing this one and I'm going to drag that down and I'm going to drag. Uh, leave that up there and let's actually looks pretty decent we'll leave that there come up here to this one so I actually have to hit the select tool select this tools deform selection we're going to do the same thing we're going to hold our shift key we're going to push this one up push this one up Holding our shift key still, we'll just drag this down. Okay. Now select tool. I'm going to turn off my icing layer, select the candles. Now I've got all three candles here, but I don't want all three candles. Actually I want to turn that icing layer back on because I need to grab my candles and my flame here, select those two, select those two, holding the shift key to get them all. I'm going to group these. And now I'm going to tell it, um, I'm going to lock my aspect ratio and I'm going to tell it I want it to be 85% of that original size. Hit my tab button, that shrinks that down. Now I'm going to 
while those are still selected just in fact I'll go ahead and turn off my icing All right now control arrow get those just to overlap a little bit come to this one get it to overlap just a little bit very good now I can select that hold my shift key select that and let's group that and actually you know what these are grouped with the flame so I need to turn that back on so I can see make sure yep I need to ungroup those select just the candles group those turn those flames back off now select all that weld those together those probably are not overlapping nope so we'll control arrow there select all of it weld it together turn those flames back on and the icing back on and now that with just a quick couple of changes you know I still don't have my offset on my cake so let's select the cake do the offset and say okay and now we can put that back on feel now which of those two cakes look better let me know in the comments what you think did those quick easy steps make that look a thousand percent better oops I didn't mean to do that all right undo let's group all that well oh, gotta select it all there we go group you and now what are you doing to me here all that Oh, <laughs> uh, well. That's what happens when you don't have it all group. Group. And group. And now line to the bottom. Or, there we go. What do you think, boys and girls? Did those extra few steps make that look so much better? Or would you not waste your time doing it? Did you learn anything about the new... Uh, deform selection and somebody's on far deform selection we we worked with that we worked with the docking tools we worked with the uh, intersection we worked with the a subtract B the uh, Union so we touched on a lot of different tools here hopefully you found these tips to be helpful if you haven't paid any attention if you haven't noticed I got a new toy <laughs> There's some big things happening over at the Laser Makers Realm. If you have not watched that channel yet, you need to, and you need to be subscribed to it so you can get those notifications about the live streams. We're going to be doing some uh, really big things on Laser Makers Realm. I'm not going to give away any information here. You're going to have to tune in to our next live streams to find out about all the big and exciting things that are going to happen. And that's going to be Saturday before Father's Day. We're going to do a, a new time slot for Laser Makers Realm. It's going to be um, Saturday evening, uh, Eastern Standard Time, probably somewhere around 8 or 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So that's going to open up the window for a lot of people who haven't been able to catch the Sunday afternoon live streams. And we've got some uh, exciting things to talk about that's happening in the Laser Makers Realm. If you are not a patron of this channel, Hobo with Wood, I would greatly appreciate it if you found this video helpful. If you have learned anything from this video and you don't want to be a patron, there is a button right down here below the video that's got the little dollar sign on it. That's the super thanks. Buy me a biscuit, send me a couple bucks, I'll go over to Bojangles, which is just 150 yards that way, get me a biscuit. That would be appreciated, but my patrons are what keep this channel happening. If it weren't for my patrons, I wouldn't be here today. So if you can see it in your heart to support this channel, and if it's in the in the pocketbook, 
and jump over to patreon.com slash hobo with wood help this channel keep growing and keep it going your support would be greatly appreciated i appreciate every one of my patrons regardless of tier tier level um but consider that silver or gold for all of the best uh opportunities that i have to share with my patrons so until the next video i am hobo with wood i'm steve and i'm out <laughs>